Well, the headwinds facing anybody making anything in this country, well, they're immense right now. Energy prices are one major obstacle, but there's also hiring of skilled workers, higher interest rates and a reduced appetite for risk capital. Today, the index of the country's longest-running business survey that's run by Westpac and the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry showed a little bit of an uptick in March, but it's an uptick off a very low base. So let's bring in here Andrew McKellar, Chief Executive of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Andrew, always good to talk to you. Uh, it's a sobering reality, just the, 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 the challenges that face most Australian businesses right now. Well, hi, Ross. Uh, look, that's exactly right. And look, I'd summarise it by saying that the cost crisis uh, continues. What the, the latest survey shows is that businesses really face a, a cocktail of uh, higher inflation. Uh, they're dealing with spiralling uh, energy costs. They are dealing with uh, continuing shortages in terms of la labour supply. So, look, it's a difficult mix. And I think as we look forward, the, the outlook the level of pessimism in business about some of the challenges that they're likely to face over the next uh, one, two, three quarters uh, really is, uh, I think, uh, you know, a cause for concern. OK, so we've seen collapses in the construction industry. We've seen the same thing in the transport industry. And we understand what's been seen publicly is only a glimpse of what's happening, you know, at the lower end of many of those industries. Is the same fear there for our manufacturing industries, uh, for many of our, our services industries as well? Well, well, it is, and I think particularly this survey reflects the situation facing manufacturing, so they are under pressure. Uh, certainly the outlook is not optimistic, and I think one of the most worrying things here, Ross, is that in particular it's around investment. So we're seeing the impact of higher interest rates uh, coming through. Uh, we're seeing the fact that margins are being squeezed. Uh, businesses are facing significantly higher input costs. They can't pass that fully through. Margins are being squeezed. And as a result, um, investment is being uh, wound back. Now, that is not a good recipe if we're going to build uh, confident, uh, productive, efficient, uh, profitable companies uh, for the future. And what about the Reserve Bank right now, due to make another decision in just two weeks' time? Um, what about its role in the conditions that companies are currently facing? Well, I do think here they've got to take stock. Uh, there are real concerns that over the next uh, couple of months uh, we could start to see some of the chickens come home to roost. Uh, we don't want to see uh, firms going to the wall as a result of the pressures of uh, higher interest rates adding to what is already you know, a, a pretty dangerous uh, mix. Uh, I think it would be time for the Reserve Bank to take stock, to pause, probably not increase interest rates uh, at its next uh, meeting. Uh, if you put that uh, back to back with what we've seen around the world in terms of some of the uh, pressures that are emerging in financial markets uh, over recent days, then, then really I think we would be urging caution uh, ahead of that Reserve Bank uh, meeting. Is the federal government adding to that uh, concern to uh, the uncertainty by its industrial relations reforms, trying to consolidate uh, uh, some of those uh, awards and the collective bargaining? Um, and then on top of that, even in regards to the way in which uh, businesses might even operate in the future? Look, I think that's that's hard to say. I mean, there, there are things that the federal government can do here as it prepares the ground uh, for its budget. Uh, it's got some big challenges there. Uh, of course, business has some concerns about the industrial relations reform agenda. Uh, we don't think that the reforms that were passed late last year went in the right direction. Those haven't really had effect yet. They, they, most of them will come into effect in the second half of the year. Um, there are more changes in the pipeline we're yet to see the detail, but obviously these are issues. If we're going to really address the productivity challenges, uh, if we're going to be able to sustain a strong labour market, keep the economy at or near full employment, then the way we take that forward um, with the future industrial relation changes, uh, that will have an important impact. Andrew McKellar, Chief Executive of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time today. <laughs>